Welcome back to this video on earth materials. The sequence of videos will cover igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks as well as weathering. Today's video covers igneous rocks. The learning targets for the sequence of videos are as follows. Explain the difference between a mineral and a rock. Recognize and illustrate the rock cycle. Categorize igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks types based on their origin, composition, and texture and explain how multiple igneous rock types can form from a single magma. I want to knock off that first one right away with the picture of this pegmatite here. You can see those beautiful big crystals of feldspar and other minerals. So here you see the big crystals of the minerals all together within a rock. So in this case we have a multi-mineral rock. We're going to focus to begin with on the two main categories of igneous rocks, intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks shown on the left hand side here are rocks that crystallize beneath Earth's surface. They cool slowly compared to extrusive rocks and thus their crystals have time to grow larger. And they are exposed at the surface through erosional processes. Extrusive igneous rocks on the other hand crystallize at Earth's surface. They cool rapidly and thus their crystals are smaller than intrusive igneous rocks. And the extreme case forms volcanic glass and that is when cooling is so rapid that crystals actually don't have time to form. So those extrusive igneous rocks are glassy and they do not have crystals. Another way to look at igneous rocks is by their composition. So there is a, a gradation from felsic through intermediate to mafic, and we'll talk about each one of those. First of all, felsic igneous rocks. Those are igneous rocks that tend to be lighter in color. They contain minerals like quartz, potassium feldspar, muscovite, sodium-rich plagioclase feldspar. All those minerals are high in silica, and they're lighter in color, as you can see from the picture of the granite at the bottom of the slide. Intermediate igneous rocks tend to be gray or intermediate in color. The minerals present often are amphibole, biotite, and the intermediate compositions of plagioclase feldspar, so somewhere between the sodium-rich and the calcium-rich end of plagioclase feldspar. And they have an intermediate silica content. You can see kind of a gray-colored andesite at the bottom of this page. On the far right side, we talk about mafic igneous rocks, and those are darker in color, and the minerals present, typically olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, biotite, and calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar, often mafic igneous rocks are rich in iron and magnesium, and sometimes are called ferromagnesium rocks. They are low in silica and dark in color, like the basalt at the bottom right corner of this slide. Some additional things about mafic and felsic igneous rocks are, are trends that we can easily see. So we've already talked about uh, color. So on the left-hand side, we have ultramafic being the darkest. And on the right-hand side, we see the felsic granite there that is a lighter color. On the left-hand side, we can see the silica content of ultramafic and mafic igneous rocks around 40 to 50%. And on the right-hand side, felsic with a silica content of about 70% or higher. Magnesium, as MGO, is high in ultramafic and mafic rocks and much lower in the felsic rocks. The major mineral contents in ultramafic and mafic, again shown here, pyroxene, olivine, plagioclase feldspar, specifically the calcium-rich feldspars, and in the felsic rocks, quartz, alkali feldspars, and some of the uh, muscovites. Additionally, at the bottom of the page, you see temperature, viscosity, dissolved gases, and the type of eruption that's common. So, mafic, high temperature, felsic, low temperature magmas, low viscosity for mafic, so a low resistance to flow, high viscosity on felsic, low amounts of dissolved gases in the mafic lavas versus higher amounts of dissolved gases in felsic. And if there is a volcanic eruption of mafic materials, it tends to be a calm or quiet or maybe lava fountains, quiescent type of eruption, where those of intermediate or felsic magmas tend to be much more violent. So some trends for you to remember. 
When we talk about igneous rocks, we talk about them in two categories, their textures and their compositions. So we can determine what type of igneous rock it is that's present based on the texture that we see, which is in part controlled by the cooling rate and the composition. Some of the textures that we'll be talking about are textures of extrusive igneous rocks that are uh, formed during a violent eruption, things that are pyroclastic material. So volcanic ash oftentimes can fall down near a volcano and be fused together to form the igneous rock tuff. Pumice, um, that very light, frothy igneous rock that has so many air bubbles or vesicles in it that it will actually float on water. Also a glassy igneous rock. And then from lava flows at the surface, you have rocks such as uh, basalt and rhyolite, and those are fine-grained or aphanitic igneous rocks. From rocks that form within Earth's uh, interior, the intrusive igneous rocks, they have a coarse-grained texture or a phaneritic texture. And sometimes we see igneous rocks that have two distinct grain sizes within them. They have the large crystals, which are the phenocrysts, and those are surrounded by the smaller crystals known as the ground mass. And if we have those two distinctive crystal sizes in one rock, those are porphyries. And porphyries can be uh, aphanitic porphyries or phaneritic porphyries. Moving on to Bowen's reaction series. So Bowen's reaction series uh, describes a sequence in which minerals crystallize from a magma, and you can get some suggestions or some ideas about mineral associations in igneous rocks from looking at Bowen's reaction series. So the idea here is that uh, experimentally, a magma was started at a high temperature of somewhere around 1200 degrees C, and it was allowed to crystallize and look at the types of minerals that formed as the temperature decreased in that magma down to a temperature of about 750 degrees C. So you'll notice that there are two pathways. There is the discontinuous series on the left side and the continuous series on the right side. But this is all happening at the same time within the magma. So the first minerals that will crystallize out at the highest temperature are minerals that are rich in ferromagnesium uh, and low in silica, such as olivine and pyroxene, and then also calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar. If the magma continues to cool and those ferromagnesium uh, elements are removed from that magma, we start to see things like pyroxene and amphibole and biotite mica. And on the continuous side, the plagioclase feldspar becomes increasingly sodium rich. That's the solid solution series there that goes from calcium rich to sodium rich as temperature decreases. And finally, at the end of crystallization of that magma, we'll end up with the potassium feldspar, muscovite mica, and quartz. So the felsic or silica rich minerals uh, at the lowest temperatures. Additionally, we can look for a model uh, whereby we can identify different types of igneous rocks forming from a single type of magma. So in this cartoon of, of three little diagrams here, you see some magma body that initially has a mafic composition. And perhaps there's an eruption of a very uh, fluid basaltic lava flow, which would then serve to remove some of the iron and magnesium from that magma. Uh, at the same time, within the magma chamber, some of the crystals that could be forming, things like olivine and pyroxene and calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar, those crystals would be heavier than the surrounding melt. They would be denser than the surrounding melt. And so they might settle down to the bottom of the magma chamber uh, where they would be found later on if that magma chamber had cooled and crystallized. So that remaining melt, the remaining magma, has had a lot of the iron and magnesium removed from it, and it is becoming increasingly more silica-rich, increasingly more intermediate or felsic, and any remaining uh, eruptive materials or intrusive materials would take on more intermediate or felsic characteristics. So here you can see how multiple igneous rock types can be formed from a single magma through magma differentiation. 
Okay, let's revisit the learning targets we had for today. Um, we explained the difference between a mineral and a rock. We got started on the rock cycle thinking about igneous rocks. And we've talked about igneous rocks in terms of their origins, intrusive, extrusive, their compositions, and their textures. And then we've looked at Bowen's reaction series and magma differentiation to explain how multiple igneous rock types can form from a single magma. So go ahead and go and take your mastery check quiz at this point. I'll see you in the next video.